evening, everyone, and welcome to our Power Podcast All Star Live Stream Series. I am your co host slash moderator, Brother Bedford. We want to thank you for sharing with us your most valuable asset, your most valuable resource with us, and that mm -hmm. is your time. And as always, we want to be respectful of your time and give you as much content as we can in this short hour, but we hope that it's valuable. Matter of fact, I'll take that back. We don't hope. I know that it is valuable because I've been uh, increased so much from all of the uh, all-stars, all of the thought leaders, business builders, spiritual guidance that we've been receiving over these weeks. It has really helped to get a lot of us through what is considered a very trying time. So we thank you for taking the time out to be with us this evening. What I need you to do is a few things because I'm extremely excited about tonight as I know you will be because we're gonna be talking about wealth. This is all about wealth. Everyone loves to talk about money. We are going <laughs> to dive deep into that conversation tonight. So we want you to share right now. Go ahead and let everyone know that we're live with Dr. George C. Frazier and Dr. Terrence Cash. I mean, look at the name, Cash. We're gonna be talking about cash tonight. So go ahead and let your family and friends know, share it on your pages, share it in your Facebook groups, and tell them that we're live right now. The next thing that I need you to do is go ahead and love George Frazier's fan page, Dr. George C. Frazier's fan page. I need you to go ahead and love it and follow it. That way you get all of the notifications of all of the future podcasts that are coming up, but also all of the thought-provoking ideas that Dr. George C. Frazier shares with us on a daily basis. So we need you to do that. The next thing that I need you to do, if you're watching this over on one of the other platforms, in particular, YouTube, we need you to subscribe to that channel because the more you subscribe to that channel, you get the notifications and we're building out that channel. And Dr. George C. Frazier has some exciting things coming to you very, very soon. And you wanna be notified, so go ahead and subscribe to the channel. The other thing that I need you to do is go ahead and type in your name and where you're from. This is a blessing to be able to have a platform like this to where we're reaching people all over the world. In the midst of a pandemic, a pandemic technology has allowed us to touch people on four to five different continents. I mean, Africa, uh, London, uh, Mexico, over in Canada, and of course, in America. So we thank you all for uh, staying with us, tuning in. Many of you are not missing an episode. I have people who are emailing me saying, I have not missed one episode. And that's going to serve you well as we move through this trying time. Okay, so the last thing I want to say to you is that this Saturday we have Dr. Quad David Whitaker on. So you do not want to miss. This week has been loaded. We had Dr. Emma Frazier Pendleton just a couple of days ago, we have Dr. Terrence Cash tonight, and then we have Dr. Quad David Whitaker this Saturday. So tonight, again, this week, a full plate of information, knowledge, wisdom to be shared with you. Now I'm getting ready to turn it over into the very capable hands of uh, the host of this platform, the, the father of the networking conversation. I mean, black people didn't know what networking was <laughs> until Dr. <laughs> George C. Frazier introduced this, uh, this word into our lexicon, right? So we really didn't know what it was. We didn't know that we could build effective relationships. We didn't know that we were actually just one person away from all of the success that we desire if we did the right things and built the best relationships possible. He's already been uh, termed what one of the top 50 power brokers in Black America, which is probably an understatement. I don't know of anyone who has a Rolodex like Dr. George C. Frazier. He's the number one power broker in Black America. Also, he was on the cover of Black Enterprise Magazine. He was called the number one networker. Again, hands down, no doubt about it. We know who the number one networker is, not only in Black America, but all over the planet. And he's written six best-selling books on the subject, and he has done so much for so many of us. You're watching a lot of his students, a lot of his mentees coming before you, presenting before you. And so this is not an understatement when we're asking you to pay attention to what Dr. Joyce C. Frazier is saying, but then of course, the guests that are coming before you. The last thing I wanna to say to you, 24 years ago, I learned of a concept or what is considered the five P's. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. And we're in a time right now that we're going to have to perform on the other side of COVID-19. We're gonna to have to perform on the other side 
of the protest. We're gonna to have to perform in our life and in our business and in our careers. And the best time to do that preparation is right now. The last thing you want to do and the last thing I want to do is get past COVID-19, get past the protest, get into 2021, and then I'm in the theater of my life, I'm in the theater of my business, and I'm not prepared to perform. So I need you to do what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sit back and I'm gonna take copious notes I'm gonna go back and review this over and over again, and I'm gonna ask questions, and I want you to ask your questions. So without further ado, I wanna put you into the hands of the Hall of Famer, the Business Hall of Famer, Dr. George C. Frazier. Thank you, Brother Bedford. I love your new word, and I think it's much more appropriate than the word we've been using. You said pan damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 think that, I think we are in a pandemic, yeah. right? Damn, damn this pandemic, that is for sure. Um, uh, well, the, the, there's, a, there's a, um, a sign behind our, our esteemed guest tonight, so cash on demand. Well, that is just exactly what we're going to do tonight. Uh, we have uh, tonight an internationally renowned business money uh, and, and wealth coach, uh, Dr. Terrence Cash, uh, a brother I met oh, almost a half a decade or so ago through some very, very good friends. And uh, he has been one of our top business and wealth coaches at the Power Networking Conference. He's there with us. In, in addition to that, he's a big supporter, big sponsor. Uh, involved in the Power Networking Conference. He, it, it, brothers like him, and fortunately our conference, and we're lucky we have uh, at, at five or six major black sponsors. Uh, and uh, Dr. Terrence Cash has stepped up in, in ways that have been just uh, critically important and, and have allowed us to do our work. It has provided us more money so that we could do more things. That's really the reason we want money. <laughs> we want money is to, to have more money, to do more things, to serve our people, to serve our, our community better. Uh, he is an epitome of all of that. And I'm going to do as I've done in the past with all of our esteemed guests is I'm going to try to do a dramatic read on this handsome gentleman. He looks just gorgeous tonight. Uh, he admitted to me when, when I just first saw him, uh, I, I just, I, I didn't know why was it he, that he looked so darn good, right? And here's a guy that's 97 years old. You never know. <laughs> I mean, hey, black, you're talking about black don't crack, right? But he admitted to us prior to getting live on air uh, that he had lost 35 pounds. And I said, ah, that's what it is, that the weight loss makes you look younger. Right. And so, of course, I think his wife made him up perfectly tonight. Right. There's no shine. Right. Everything is even. Right. Look at his collar. I, I wish I could get my collar to stand up like that. I don't know what he does with his collar. He's got a beautiful jacket on with a nice puff in it. But he's always clean as a hotel chicken. When you see him, when you meet him at the conference, you're going to see he looks exactly like that live and in living color. So I don't want to take more of his time. Uh, this is about him. It's not about me. Um, and you want to get when we get someone like this uh on our podcast um we don't want to pick their brain in fact i advise in my book success runs in our race don't use picking the brain we want to seek some advice and counsel that's what we do and that's what we want to do so uh no further delay here let me do a sort of a dramatic read on his um bio and it's a truncated bio of course we, as i've said many times before uh, we cannot read everybody's full bio that would take up the whole hour with the kind of people we've invited uh to our podcast so dr Clar uh, terrence cash is the founder chairman and ceo of Greenlight advantage group incorporated as well as its related companies as the nation's number one business money and wealth coach dr cash is a seasoned serial entrepreneur, esteemed coach, accredited private investor, a philanthropist, and best-selling author. In addition, he is 
a highly sought after public speaker with 30 years of experience, wisdom, and success in business. He is in fact an elder. Dr. Cash has learned many of the hidden secrets that guide the world's wealthiest people to launch, nurture, and to grow enormously successful businesses, amass their fortunes. His company, Greenlight, is a pioneer and the leading providers of non-conventional <coughs> business, money, and wealth solutions to entrepreneurs, working professionals, and other enlightened, and I underline and put in bold the word enlightened individuals. As such, people that desire the company's guidance and who leverage it are empowered to achieve their incredible human potential, especially financial. So we welcome you, Dr. Cash, to our podcast. And we are honored to have you, glad to see you. And I know we will be inspired uh, and informed by all that you say. Every time I'm around you, I sneak in a little you know, question or two uh, to sneak some coaching from you on the fly. <laughs> and uh, you are always so humble and always so gracious and uh, you, you've never given me bad advice. Welcome. Thank you, George, my good brother and friend. It is my absolute pleasure to be here. And uh, I herald and salute you this evening. Uh, you mentioned earlier about how good I look, but of course I also commented, you know, that you have a time machine hidden somewhere. Maybe it's in the backyard, maybe it's in the uh, rec room or the theater in your house. But I just want the pin codes for a weekend, George. I, I just got some things to do when I was 25 and want to clean up. <laughs> well, my time machine, my time machine is my 47 year marriage with my sister friend, wife, mother of my children, Nora Jean. That is my time machine. Now, I used to call what Gene would do uh, nagging. <laughs> then I got older and wiser. And it wasn't nagging. It was just she was trying to preserve what she has invested in, make sure that I was as healthy as I could be, that I was being a good boy when I go out in the world and I was doing all the right things. Correct. So that's my secret to success. Absolutely. Find one, listen, don't interpret what they say as nagging. It's really advice and counsel yes. to keep you healthy, wealthy, and wise. Right? That's my time machine. Um, so let me start with the question that is relevant to this moment in time. And I don't know anyone better prepared with the wisdom and experience to answer this question fully uh, than you, Dr. Cash. Uh, with the nation's um, deepening economic crisis spurred on by the coronavirus pandemic, can everyday people, <coughs> everyday people still do things to create grow and protect wealth absolutely right absolutely george um one of the things our viewers tonight have to consider is that they must continue to position themselves in the line of money now you hear me use terms i will define them but the wealthy have a certain vocabulary mm. and i look to mirror that so when I say you want to position and further yourself in the line of money, I'm saying that you want new, additional, and diverse cash flows. Notice I didn't use the word income mm -hmm. because only income is taxable. So you don't want any more income unless you want to pay more taxes. You want cash flow. You know, mm -hmm. Jeff Bezos, the richest man in the universe, 120, 125 mil, uh, billion dollars. Now that might have went down some because of his stock, but 
Jeff is a very rich man. He announced last year, surprise, surprise, he didn't have to pay any taxes. Well, that's because Mr. Bezos didn't have any income. Now, billions of dollars went his way, so he's in the line of money. New, diverse, and additional cash flows are coming his way. But most of those cash flows are not taxable or aren't taxable because he would have paid some taxes. So he didn't have income coming his way. He didn't take any wages, George. So what your view is, our viewers tonight want to consider is every dollar ex of an expense, every dollar of expense at home, the ideal dynamic and situation is that dollar generates or creates a, a dollars and free cash flow and they want a situation where new diverse and additional cash flows are coming their way i.e the line of money yes so, can, you give us, that's, that's, that's possible. can you give us an example so the difference between income versus cash flow because most people would think well, cash flow, in fact, is income, but maybe it's the way you store it or the way you book it. I, I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a, a fascinating dynamic. Well, Here's cash flow is, in fact, and you said it just now, George, cash flow is, in fact, uh, um, income is a type of cash flow, but the rich, the affluent, and the wealthy aggressively avoid income. Why? And so our working professionals, our nine to five working professionals that are on this uh, uh, call and podcast tonight, they get income. And they need to remember and always consider that only income is taxable. They should think that to themselves. Only income is taxable. Well, that kind of suggests that there's other types of money. There are cash flows that are called um, uh, owner's equity. So, George, if if I invested a million dollars in your business, I wired a million dollars to Frazier debt, of course, mm -hmm. that would go into the bank account, but that's not taxable. That's called owner's equity. It's a contribution. It's an investment, um, so to speak. And that is 100% tax exempt. Um, revenue is not taxable. It's just what's left over from revenue, which is called profit. That's taxable, right? So revenue is shorthand for the money you make. The money you make when you sell something is revenue, right? And that's not taxable. When businesses get checks, they are exempt from paying taxes at the outset. But after they pay all of their business expenses, then they got some left. That's called profit. And profit is taxable for businesses. So you want to, if, if you have the option and the opportunity to avoid income, because not everyone can, George, of course, if they're blessed to have a job, the last thing they're going to do tomorrow is say, look, Dr. Cash, uh, was on a podcast last night and he said that I should aggressively avoid, you know, income. So I don't want to get paid. You know, I want you to pay my business, right? Because most jobs won't do that. Now, if you're a contractor and they're paying you, usually called a 1099, I like to call them unincorporated independent contractors because they can pay your business. And that's what you want them to do. That's preferable because individuals have a lot less tax advantages than corporations or LLCs. There are probably 250, George, or more write-offs for these corporations and other legal entities than you'll get individually. And despite his politics, the guy in the White House is catering to what? People who own businesses, right? So if you wanna uh, benefit from some of those tax policies, then you want to be in business at some point. One thing I will mention that's kind of going to your request for additional clarity 
is that no matter if any of our viewers are entrepreneurial, they can always run their life as a business. They can run their life as a business. And when I say run their life as a business, George, there are special secondary businesses. We call them lifestyle businesses or new lifestyle businesses. And with the proper guidance, people can fund and finance their personal life. I'm talking about they can write off their groceries, uh, George. They can write off new cars. They can write off wardrobe upgrades. Now, there's a way to do everything, right? But they can fund and finance their personal life and lifestyle. That's number one. Number two, they get better uh, coverage and more uh, protection of their assets and themselves from legal liability. If somebody sues you and you don't, ha you don't have any money in the bank, it's in your corporation's name or your LLC's name, then it's not your money. So they can't take it. You know, Back in the day, George, Ted Kennedy, you know, we know him as an older senator, but when he was a younger man, God bless his soul, uh, he was a wild child, right? And we know the whole thing about Chappaquiddick. He went out on a date, he got drunk, and he drove his car in the lake. You know, you got to be pretty drunk to <laughs> drive your car in the lake. <laughs> but unfortunately, his date died. Now, guess how much money that family got from the super rich Kennedys for the loss of their daughter. I have no idea. Unfortunately, George, absolutely nothing. And wow. this wow. is in the power of using, you know, these entities, which are legal people. The Kennedys can't be sued for money they don't possess. And I'll put in parentheses for our viewers, in their accounts, in their names, they can't have mansions and other property taken for them if they don't own it. You can't take it. Um, and all the other assets they have. You know, back in the 70s, I think it was Nelson Rockefeller of the famous Rockefeller family says, own nothing but protect everything, everything and control it. Now the control is through these legal entities. So rich people, especially the uber rich, don't own anything, George. Believe it or not, they don't have any bank accounts in their names. They don't have any cards registered title insured to them. They don't have homes in their names, George, because they're targets, they're lottery tickets in essence. So if you sue a rich man, you're gonna get a old woman, you're gonna get absolutely nothing. Because they don't own anything, but they control everything. Dr. So, Dr. Uh, Dr. Cash, re real quick, can you can you speak to why do you think that is? Because I've heard that a lot as well. That as Black people, we want everything in our name, right? We want it in our name. Yes, uh, sir. Pride thing? Is it an ego thing, or is it just a matter of just being uh, not educated in these different entities and the best way to own assets? Well, Brother Bradford, that's a very good question. And you pretty much hit it on the head. People who are black, brown, and beige mostly are ignorant to the hidden secrets that only the wealthy know. And you know, those secrets are the greatest legacy and asset that wealthy people leave their kids. And, that t and tell their closest friends and associates. These secrets we're talking about tonight here, George, they are priceless and uh, just a total package for someone who wants to create wealth. If you don't know these secrets, either A, you'll never build wealth, you'll never create it, or B, you'll create it, but just some years down the road, you'll be broke and filing for bankruptcy. So can you say superstar athletes? Can you say celebrities and other performers? People who hit the lottery? It's not necessarily that they just went crazy and burned down the mall shopping, 
Um, some of them are quite conservative, but they don't know these secrets. They don't do the right things with their money. Again, George, one of the pil pillars of uh, four pillars of uh, of uh, uh, yeah. wealth and intergenerational wealth. Proper management of of your finances. They don't have that knowledge. So my answer, in short, Brother Bedford would be the unknown unknown. Unfortunately, mostly our people don't know what they don't know. And once they begin to learn these hidden secrets and principles and truths and laws, then the whole universe opens up to them and they begin to create wealth. But they're not going to do it the way they're doing it now. Yeah. Um, um, based on some advice you gave me some time ago, you helped me eliminate one of the stupidest things from a financial management standpoint that that I that I that I did. Someone gives me a two a, a ten thousand dollar check for a speech, and for years they gave me the check in my name. Oh, yes, bad. <laughs> bad, 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 bad. But I had the old G, old school Negro mentality that Brother Bedford talked about. Yes. I want to own my own money. I want it in my name. Right. Where's my check? My check. Right, right. right, right. <laughs> my check. Bad, 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 bad. Paid stupid taxes, which I thought were like, well, I guess everybody pays them. <clears throat> right. Wrong. So I switched it to a corporation. Very good. The check now goes to the corporation, not to me. Not to you. All right. And then all of the taxes and not taxes, but all of the deductions that are available to corporations <laughs> right. come out of that money, Dr. Cash. Absolutely. And only the profit that is left, I pay taxes on. Right. Which you have complete control of. <laughs> I have complete control of. So that is a like, brothers and sisters, if you're listening, that's Duh. Right? <laughs> now, now you know. So now you can't unknow. Right. So right. You're right? responsible for what That's you know. One little tip there. If you are, let's call you a self-employed professional. Yes. Right? If you're a speaker and or an entrepreneur in some way, get whatever is owed to you, paid to you in the name of your legal entity. Absolutely. Paid directly to you. Right. If possible, right? Absolutely. That even includes, let's say you're in network marketing and you're one of the top achievers in network marketing, right? And you get a $50,000 check every month from the great work that you're doing. I hope you're not getting that check in your name. <laughs> you given that multi-level marketing person who's in charge of all the accounting of that company a company to write your check uh, uh, name to right so yeah that, that's huge man that, that's and, and and you know it it seems simple but it isn't um uh, 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 until you know it Right, right. No tell, you know, no one tells us these things. We don't get financial education classes in school. We don't even no. get them from our parents. No, right? they didn't know. Right? They didn't know. Right? So this is extraordinarily helpful. Um, second question. What major distinction or distinctions exist between those rare few as you talk about all the time, who are currently wealthy and privileged versus the countless individuals who desire to become rich and ultimately fail? Okay, great question, George. There's only a few stark and distinct differences. The number one difference 
is the only difference between people who are less enlightened and the rich, the affluent and the wealthy, people you may imitate or envy financially, is their mindset, their perspective, and their relationship with money. So mm -hmm. mindset, perspective, and relationship with money. So I want our viewers to really understand that because it's subtly um, clarifying. So that means the only difference between Oprah Winfrey in our audience, Magic Johnson in our audience, Warren Buffett in our audience, or some of our audience, is that they have a much more enlightened mindset. And one of the chief elements of that mindset is their belief system, George, right? What they believe, why they believe it, and what they're prepared to do with what they believe. So mindset is first. Then their perspective. Rich people just have a broadened perspective. They're not narrow-minded. You know, when I tell some of my coaching clients that um, they need to run their life as a business, and I began to break that out, they are both amazed and frightened because <laughs> most people fear what makes them feel uncomfortable. You know, and it's our addiction to comfort, and you said it many times, uh, it's killing us. <laughs> That's, you know, but we have to broaden our perspective with money. And then finally, our relationship with money. You know, money is much like us. Money does not want to be lonely at somebody's house. So if you don't have any money, your money is looking for the exit door to go to your house, George, my house, brother, brother, people with more money. Because <laughs> money doesn't like to be lonely. And if you got little of it, there's not too much of it hanging around. Yeah, money. Right? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Right. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So um, most people don't enlighten their mindset, broaden their perspective, or improve dramatically their their. Uh, how do they do that, though, Doc? I mean, how do they do that? How do you enlighten your mind? Is it the people you hang out with? Is it the coaching that you get? How do you do that? How do you broaden your perspective, right? Right, right. It, it just doesn't come by osmosis. No, no. you're absolutely right, Joy. Um, Well, certainly, if you tell me who you hang out with, if you tell me what books you read, mm -hmm. and you tell me how you spend your time and your money, um that's going to be a key success factor for you being able to change your mindset, perspective, and relationship with money. There are things that are just uh, counterintuitive. You know, I hung around the rich uh, for decades, George, and just listened and followed them. And I was in all these fancy investment clubs in New York where one of the richest guys in there was worth $970 million, basically a billionaire. Some of these people I got a chance to hang out with. And some of these people, I had a, a continuous relationship like they were golf buddies uh, when I used to play golf all the time. And they told me all of these philosophies and secrets. Like, I'll give something that your viewers will never have heard anywhere else. There are two types of people on planet Earth. There are living people, like the four of us on this broadcast, human beings, right? And then there are legal people. And when I say legal people, I'm talking about the group of artificial people, George, that includes foundations, trusts, uh, LLCs and corporations and, and estates. And those other people, those legal people are exactly like human beings except as it relates to money. So they have all the rights we have under the Constitution. They have all the recognitions we have uh, by a home state. But when it comes to money, they do better, much better. And that's why the rich use them as vehicles to create their wealth in the first place. And so that's something your viewers will have never heard anywhere else that there's two types of people on the planet. 
that was one of the first things I learned and came to the conclusion of talking to rich people. You wouldn't have read that in the book until my book comes out at the end of the year. You wouldn't have seen that online because it's like a needle in a haystack. Only they don't tell you it's a needle, George, and they don't tell you you can find it in a haystack. So you'll never find it. So some of these truths and rules and laws, you've got to get from rich people and or people that know them and they're willing to share them with you. Otherwise, you may never come to these conclusions because they're counterintuitive, they're non-traditional. You said earlier, our parents did the best they could do, but they didn't know this stuff. They were all about get a good education, work your butt off, get a good job, do your 25 or 30 years, get the gold watch and the pension. We know that's long gone, first of all, with 40 million people out of work, <laughs> but it was gone before that. So we have to stress these non-conventional counterintuitive things that really matter to people's money game. And so, yes, sir, yes. No, just Dr. Cash, real quick, because I, I just, and I know we're stepping on each other. I want to make sure that the people hear these questions and, and, your, and your answers clearly. Because um, I, I really want, you said something, I just really want you to kind of demystify a corporation. I think a lot of times, uh, as black people, when we talk about going into business and we, we, we think of corporations or, or trust or land trust and foundations, we see right. huge buildings and they're out of our reach. So I want you to kind of demystify that and kind of just give us, point us to how simple it could be to get started. Not that you can have this uh, humongous organization and business, but how you can get started with just having an LLC and the benefits of having that. Oh, absolutely. Well, as I said earlier, and it's a great question, Brother Bedford, a corporation or LLC, trust, estate, first thing people should always remember, they're people. That's number one. And your natural second question might be, you mean like me? I mean exactly like you, but better. <laughs> so that's the first thing. A business, which is really what you're referring to, is a money machine made out of people. So a business is a container for all these assets that will ultimately go in. The owner and founder of the business is gonna start and they're gonna pour in some of their knowledge and skill set, right? So that's the first thing that goes in container. They're probably gonna separate themselves from some money, right? And that's gonna go in the container. And then they might hire some people, whether they're W-2 employees or independent contractors. And those people will provide additional skill sets and other knowledge. So now they're utilizing leverage. And now all that mixed up in this wonderful exotic container now becomes productive. You know, they call businesses productive assets because there are other assets that are not productive. Like gold, gold is not a productive asset. It's an asset, but it's not a productive asset because you buy a bar of gold, it's just gonna sit there on your desk. And the price appreciation or depreciation is only by speculation and what else is going on in the market. Um, that gold's not gonna go anywhere, can't do anything useful. But if you have a farm and Warren Buffett had had mentioned about he'd rather buy, you know, uh, businesses and real estate than buy uh, this 40 by 40 foot bar gold, right? Which is worth all this money, but he'd rather buy businesses because those businesses can continue to churn out money and be productive. So basic a business is a money machine. If you construct it right, and if you're focusing on whatever you're selling, it's a money machine. And it's very easy to set up. The trick, Brother Bedford, is in knowing how to go from that early stage of incorporating or forming your LLC or your, your, your corporation, taking it from there. And I'll just say there's one phrase that will help them at that point, and then they should call us. 20 years ago, I got interviewed and somebody asked me, this was a primetime interview, and somebody asked me, 
you know, Dr. Cash, in one phrase, in one pithy phrase, tell me about success in business. And I'm thinking like, oh my God, that's almost impossible. But what I said then is more true now than when I said it. And I said this, you have to develop the habit, the skill set of consistently and constantly seizing opportunities. And you have to develop the habit of consistently fending off threats. So if you consistently can seize opportunities and you can consistently fend off threats, you will be a tremendous success forever in business. Think about the companies that didn't make it for a second, like Arthur Anderson. They were in business 110 years, but they never saw the whole Enron thing coming. And boom, 50,000 people out of work and they went under. You know, And then you got these businesses that came out of nowhere, like Amazon. Jeff Bezos was selling what books first, right, initially. And then he went on to taking over the universe. And, you know, so if you can consistently seize opportunities and you can consistently fend off threats, that's how your viewers become successful. Now, of course, we all know there's a lot of details and clarity that goes into that, but that's their focus when they first start. And like you said, Brother Bedford, they can get started, they can open a business, usually for a few hundred dollars, and then take it from there. Yeah. Uh, I talk all, all the time at the conference about multiple streams of income, that we sh it should not be a Black person with a single stream of income. There are many ways that you can go in terms of income. I'm going to list a few, and I want you to comment uh, if you were, was what you know now, uh, what would be number one for you? I mean, and these, are, these, are, these are the seven main streams of income. There's earned income, right? That's mm -hmm. income from work, working from a job. Mm -hmm. There's profit income, income from buying and selling. Right. There's interest income, income from lending money. There's dividend income, income from owning stocks, rental income, income from renting houses or commercial property, capital gains income, assets from increase that are increasing in value. Right. Um, <clears throat> the royalty income, income from others using your idea. Or yes. Yes. So quickly, earn income, profit income, interest income, dividend income, rental income, capital gains, and royalty income. In your mind, I know it's a lot of information to process. What would you see as the top one, two, three that you would pursue if all that you know now? Right. What would you pursue? What would be? What would you focus on? Well, let me say it this you way. To Say it again. Maybe you answered it already, but 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 just what we yeah, what yeah. There are five ways to make money. I call it the money rule of five. You can earn it. You could save it. You could borrow it. You could inherit it, or you could steal it. <laughs> <laughs> earn it, borrow it, save it, inherit it, or steal it. Now, of course, I'm not uh, in any way promoting the illicit one. But the number one way when you get down to it is earn it, but earn it how? The only way most likely to create wealth in your lifetime is to earn it through a profitable, productive, and sustainable business because of the velocity of money. If you are working in a day job, and you're making 50, 60, 70, $80,000, we know the tax man cometh, right. and that's gonna be reduced by 20 to who knows, God forbid, 40%. And then what you're left with, you're barely able to meet your household spend every month. So you don't have enough money left over to create wealth. I mean, not in a meaningful way, right? But if you got a corporation of businesses, Brother Bedford brought out, 
and it's making one million, two million, five million dollars, and a hefty portion of that can be uh, tucked away or to buy assets, other productive assets, and maybe you can invest the money in what I call cash on cash. You park the money somewhere, you're getting 10, 12, 15%. Wonderful way. So the number one way to create wealth is to earn it through your business. Now, once you got your business going, now you're looking at some of the other things you talked about, uh, George, like royalty. I, I'm, I'm going out of order, but yeah, royalties yeah, are yeah. wonderful. Wonderful uh, cash flow, right? Because it's not income, it's not coming to you. So if you got patents, if you got some intellectual property, you shouldn't have that in your name either. Because God forbid, you got all these homes, you got the uh, collectible cars, you got patents, and then somebody sues you. You are now a lottery ticket. And think about it, only makes sense. They're much better odds to win in court with a sympathetic judge getting a settlement from you than it is hitting the Powerball, right? Powerball is like one in 10 million. What do you think the odds are of somebody getting something, 50,000, 150,000, 250,000 from you? They're a lot less. So that's why people wanna uh, own nothing but control everything. Now that's the ultimate. They're not gonna get to that overnight. But that's the ultimate. So as many of those uh, incomes uh, and uh, cash flows, let me say it that way, and ways to make money in and around your business, you got multiple businesses. So maybe, George, you got a best soul food restaurant in, in Ohio. And, you know, of course, you got your consulting business. You got your coaching business. You got your speaking business. Every one of those businesses is producing revenue, right? Now, here's the thing that people don't realize that the rich do. Since they aggressively avoid income, they're not getting paid salaries from those four businesses, by and large, because Jeff Bezos could not pay zero in taxes if he had any income coming from that. I think it's $600, you know, automatically the IRS is looking for some money because they'll give, you know, they expect your employer to give you a 1099. What Jeff Bezos and the super rich do as one of their plays in their playbook, they have their uh, businesses invest in their special purpose business that we call a new lifestyle business. I mentioned it earlier. So imagine Dr. Frazier's making a million dollars on his soul food restaurant. But let's say if he paid himself, but he's not going to pay himself, right? Because that would hurt him. He increases income. But if he paid himself, he could pay himself $200,000. What do you think Dr. Frazier is gonna do? He's going to invest. This is just a book entry, book entry gentlemen on your accounting. He's gonna invest $200,000 into his new lifestyle business. And that's real money, but it's tax exempt. Now his coaching, his uh, consulting, his speaking businesses are all multi-million dollar businesses. And so he can get 150,000 from here. He can get 250,000 there. No income because the rich aggressively avoid it. And again, Jeff Bezos, you know, uh, Warren Buffett pays almost pays less than his secretary in taxes, right? You already know what Trump's done, right? And so these guys wrote the playbook. So you can't do better than that. Matter of fact, the only thing that's mandatory is people have to pay the minimum legal tax. And that's how we, we articulate it so people know, okay, the advice I'm getting, the counsel I'm getting is I'm going to pay the minimum, possibly zero, like Jeff Bezos. It's going to be legal, and I'm going to pay my taxes. And that's all your committed and required to do by the IRS, the minimum legal tax. Unfortunately, most of our viewers tonight are paying just the opposite. They're paying the maximum legal tax and doesn't make them any more patriotic. <laughs> Certainly doesn't make them less susceptible to an audit, believe it or not. 
and but yet they pay and they pay and all they're doing is dwindling down that store of funds that's going to accumulate to create wealth especially to the level that dr frazier always talks about it intergenerational wealth that means you got enough money where you're good putting it in layman's terms and now your kids are good right um really good to generation upon generation you're not going to get there if you're paying the maximum legal tax and that's why it's one thing that the rich there was a article about 10 years ago george in the new york times and they did an expose do the rich pay their fair share we already know the answer right so they queried and surveyed a thousand rich affluent and wealthy people and said you know how's it look on taxes well they didn't give any names it was a blind survey but at the end of the day an overwhelming majority it was like 98 percent paid either little or nothing and guess what the consensus was most of them paid absolutely nothing the minimum legal tax year hoping to have a business takeoff um what are some of the biggest threats to the success uh of that new venture and what can they do about that okay i will just review just in by way of remark don't forget consistently seizing opportunities and consistently fending off threats but in addition to that um new it doesn't have to be a new entrepreneur the unknown unknown is such a limiting factor because people don't know what they don't know and unfortunately sometimes people who are black brown or beige don't seek out the answers mm -hmm. to know more because they could in this mm -hmm. day and age might sound a little self-serving might sound a little convenient they need a coach they need a guide they need an advisor you know no one knows everything even the richest people on the planet like jeff bezos and warren buffett have advisors and george of course you know this you know have advisors and coaches i mean i'm not hiking through the himalayas gentlemen without a guy you know i'm not doing it you know if our viewers want to do it they should send me some pictures you know they can look at all the youtube videos they want they can read all the books they can find on the subject I'm simply not doing it. I'm going to get a top flight guy. They're going to know the terrain. They're going to know the weather. They're going to know the elevation. They're going to have the provisions. They always got the llamas, right? The dogs. And I'm following her because she know, not only knows uh, how this is going to be successful, but she knows why. And so you need a coach. You need a guy. And I'd say the last thing is, the best investment you can make is to invest in yourself. Yeah. yeah. And if you think about it, you almost have total control over that. You know, so not only is it the best investment, if you query that on a Google search and say, what was Warren, Beff uh, Warren Buffett's best investment? What was Jeff Bezos' best investment? What was Tony Robbins' best investment? They will all say, I invested in myself, you know, so I've had some wonderful coaches over the years, George. I've never had any horror stories. Uh, and these coaches were expensive. I'm not saying good coaches have to be expensive, but the best advice is often premium. You can only go so far and you say this all the time, George, on free information, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you can only go but so far. And then somebody's got to cut a check, as you always say, you right. know, and we don't want to cut checks. And then we're wondering why we don't get checks. Well, you're not cutting them. Right. <laughs> so you got to right. cut them to get them. In this, so, in this, stock, in, in this unprecedented time of economic chaos, if you will, and uncertainty, what can we do to sort of reduce our fear of financial ruin? What can we do? Well, we should remember that only 
one answer leads to wealth. Not five, not 10, not 20, one answer. There's three answers in life and business and your money game. There's wrong answers. And of course, nobody wants those. They are just absolutely horrific on your money game. Then it's the right answer, George. You get right answers from your banker. You get them from your CPA. You get them from your financial advisor. You get them from your attorney. But they're only able to handle garden variety challenges and issues. Nobody ever got, got rich from right answers. The rich get rich by getting really right answers. These are answers that are just so transforming them to your history of success that it looks like you had even evolved or moved before them. And that's the answers me and my team at Greenlight always endeavor to give. And I've given a number of them on this, this broadcast, on this podcast, the really right answers. I mean, George, you don't want to hear, well, George, just save your money and stay out of credit card debt because that's really not going to help you. Right. But if I be, but and I thank you so much for what you said earlier, but I mentioned to you, well, Dr. Frazier, you should have all that uh, honorariums and all this consulting and all that. That should go to a corporation, not to you. You just putting yourself in another tax bracket and it helped you. And I'm so glad it did. I'll send you the bill, George, tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, that helped you. People have to know that. And the only way they're going to know that is if they're taking their money game seriously. They're getting a coach. They're getting the really right answers because anything else is just going to give them incremental, marginal improvements. And we only live but so long that God bless you. I, you know, I pray and look forward to 75, George, some, uh, you know, uh, well, I'm 60, almost 60. So it's some 15 years away. You know, and then I hope you live to be 140. God bless you. But you know, you know, take your time on the 75 thing, right? <laughs> if you want to get there, but take your time. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so I'm looking to get there, but we don't live like the old days, the biblical days, you know, 900 and, you know, 800, because then you might have a little more time to build wealth in these incremental uh, steps. We need to create wealth in our lifetime. I mean, that's the point, right? Oh, he created a fortune after you died. <laughs> you know, that's good for your family, but, you know, and it usually doesn't happen. You want to create wealth during your lifetime. Right. And the only right. way, well, the most, the way most likely is you need to create a powerfully successful and productive business yeah. and do some of the things I mentioned. We are down to seven minutes. Man, this has been very, very enlightening. Uh, so I got a, just a couple more questions for you. Um, considering that there are over 40 million Americans who are now unemployed, is getting a job um, a solution to poverty uh, in your financial woes? I mean, what's up with that? What? 40 million people. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be diplomatic. Uh, George, because I've been an entrepreneur for now 30 years, and I went out of corporate America kicking and screaming, by the way. So I wasn't one of those guys that just said, let me go out and create a business. No, I got laid off. I got downsized. I got right side. And then I saw the opportunity. But again, if your goal is to create wealth, and people have to make that decision early on in the game. I, I call it a ship burning moment, George. You know, they said the Vikings of old were ferocious warriors. And they said one of the things they did is when they landed on the shores, the beaches of their enemies, they burned their wooden ships to the ground. And the sight of those ships burning down on that beach, they knew one thing. I'm not getting off this damn island unless I go through the enemy or, you know, I'm going to die here. And so I think our viewers have to have a ship burning moment. You can't be sick and tired of being sick and tired continuously. You got to come to the point where you say, I'm going to make a radical change. If they haven't come to the, 
Power Networking Conference, they need to get their butts there because it changed my life four years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, if they don't come to this podcast, they need to come to things like this. They're not coming on the Cash on Demand podcast. They need to come to those. But they need to have their ship burning moment and stop thinking that they are going to be rescued by a biweekly paycheck. Because it hasn't worked all these years, George. And now you're out of work. I mean, come on. One in four Americans is out of work and increasing, right? I think it was two million people went to unemployment just this week alone. So as Brother Bedford said, this is a wonderful time to work on your craft and get your act together. It's also a wonderful time to finally start that business. When are you going to do it? One of the things that didn't want to happen to me, George, is to have regrets. Growing old, now I'm 90 years old, and now I want to start that business. I can barely move from one side of the bed to the other. You know, you're not going to start the business or you won't be as effective as you'd like starting that business. Um, Do it now. You know, while you're, you're out of work, jobs are hard to come by anyway. They used to tell me a month for every 10,000 in income. Now that was 20 years ago, George. So if you made $60,000, it's gonna take you at least six months to get a job, another job. What do you think the odds are now? I, it's gotta be double that or more, right? So the odds are not with you. So use the time to evolve and better yourself. Start a business, get a coach and get it together. Hon your craft. You're going to make money, but you got to learn the secrets of money. So right. that's my best. Right. One final question, and we're a little bit over time, to, but this is just you know fascinating, interesting, helpful, useful. Uh, is it still wise uh, to invest in retirement uh, savings in the stock market in times like these? What about real estate? Okay. No to retirement savings plan and the stock market. And the principal reason is for 11 years that ended last May, we were in the longest bull market in the 100 plus year history of the stock market. Mm -hmm. Now we've gone into a bear market cycle. And of course, now with the pandemic and the economy, and we got some voting to do maybe in November, um, uncertainty is going to reign. It is going to be years, and I can be quoted on this, George, it's going to be at least four years, and that's a very conservative quote, to maybe as much as 10 years before this bear market thing works itself out. Most retirement savings plans invest heavily in what's called equity traded funds, meaning they buy stocks. You know, as well as I do, uh, George, what's happening to stock prices right now? Plummeting, right? So if you're in funds, if your retirement is mostly in funds tied to stocks, you're going to have a miserable next four to 10 years. Yeah, last four months, uh, I've lost 30% of my stock portfolio. Oh, yeah. And that's average, George. Believe it or not, that's not even terrible. There are people that did worse. George, so you're George, absolutely- George, I want you to repeat that one more time in terms of the percentages. Can you repeat that one more time? Yeah. My stock portfolio, which is pretty broad and expansive, typically well-managed, I've lost 30% of my stock portfolio in the last three months. Wow. Yes. Yes. I'm going to say something a little controversial, George. It's certainly not foreign to you. You said a lot of brilliant controversial things. Folks, get out of the stock market. Because right now you're in Vegas. If you're in a 401k, if you're in a 403b, if you're in a pension, most of those funds are invested in equity traded funds, i.e. stocks. They're not going up. They're going down. They're going sideways. They're going down. They're going sideways. You're wringing your hand at two o'clock at night. There are ways to get out where you're just not in the market at all, George. It's not the best strategy, 
but at least you don't lose any money. You know, Warren Buffett had his two rules. I have three. Never lose money, always make money, and always follow rules one and two. <laughs> so you at least don't want to lose money, right? Because, George, you're 30%, believe it or not, you have to make 60% to break even. That's just how the math goes. How long do you think it's going to take to make 60%? It's going to take years. And that's why they said we'll stay in the market and all that. But there are options. They don't tell you about it. You know, but if you folks who are watching have lost 20%, you got to make 40% to break even, to be sure. 30% is 60%, etc. cetera. So you have to make double over the next umpty um years to break even. But, but, but as you mentioned, Dr. Cash, and as George mentioned, it's, we're talking about just over the three-month period. So it's Three not like months. we're done yet. It's not, no one can say for certain that we've hit the bottom, right? It's right. Like That's right. <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. How can people get in touch with you, Dr. K? Other than coming to the Power Networking Conference, where you will be doing several, several workshops, you'll be doing the Power Talk. They can meet you up close and personal. You come and stay. Uh, but other than that, they want to get in touch with you now. Uh, I know you're going to start a, a pot, your own podcast, Cash on Demand. Talk. Yeah. Just, you got a couple minutes. Just talk a little bit about how to get in touch with you and Cash on Demand. Probably the best way they can get in touch, and easiest way, George, to get in touch with us is go to our corporate website, but make sure that they scroll down to take our wealth creation course, our free wealth creation course. So that website is www.greenlight, so that's G-R-E-E-N-L-I-G-H-T, S is in Sam, V is in victory, C is in cat, S again, like short for services.com. So that's greenlight, svcs.com. And scroll down just not even three inches, and they'll see a big button to take our free wealth creation course. Uh, our uh, chief marketing officer, Larry Mitchell, worked on that thing tirelessly for the last few months. And it's interactive video. So they'll see answers from me uh, via video in, embedded in the course, and they'll know how well they did on various questions, and uh, they can take the course in probably about 30 minutes, maybe less, and they at least have some of this uh, wisdom and information they can, uh, they can begin to accumulate. Uh, so greenlightsvcs.com. Uh, Brother Beth, any final thoughts? We're down to the wire here, any kind of thoughts? No, the, the only thought I have, George, uh, first just to, to thank Dr. Cash for uh, just the extreme amount of wealth that, that he delivered in terms of oh, my pleasure. knowledge tonight. Um, but so my, my, my last thought is actually a quote from Dr. Terrence Cash, which is, <laughs> take your money game seriously. <laughs> That's the only thing I want to say, because I'm getting ready to make sure that I take my money game series. I just want to thank you, Doc, for, for sharing that with us. Oh, my absolute pleasure, uh, Brother Bedford, and thanks for all your help behind the scenes uh, getting us ready for this. Brother George, you know I love you. We will always be there to support you as, as I live and breathe. Let's put it that way. And uh, good Lord willing, if I'm breathing, I'm at the Power Networking Conference in October. Um, I'll, I'll just say one little final thought because I know we have to wrap up. and I, It's a quote. A wise man can learn more from a foolish question than a fool can learn from a wise answer. Now, that was Bruce Lee. <laughs> I, love that. I love that. Join us at the Power Networking Conference, as Dr. Cash has mentioned. As you know, on our podcast, we give a deep discount to the first five people who email me at gfraser at frasernet.com. Say I'm in. Put your name and your cell phone number in the body of the email. You can only get this through me. I will call you. We will close the deal on it. But the Power Networking Conference is where you connect, where you grow, where you prosper, where you 
where we only discussed for four days, 96 hours, business and money, business and money, business and money. There ain't a damn thing else to discuss. <laughs> Um, the new black power. You need to get your money game in order, as Brother Bedford say, said. So this is what we discuss at the Power Networking Conference. And we have the best and brightest coaches, mentors, experts, and, and Dr. Cash is all of the above. Um, the, uh, an adult registration, as you know, is $1,500. That's a bargain. As I said all the time, I say all the time, if you meet one person that could help change the financial trajectory of your life, would that be worth $1,500? The answer to that is hell to the yes, it would be. <laughs> All right. We want you to bring a young person, 17 to 25, so they can sit at the feet of the masters that you will meet at this power networking conference. And that's exactly what it is. It is using our power to connect, grow, and prosper, and to meet, and to bond, and to learn from other people. So that package, uh, student registration is $800. An adult registration is uh, $1,500. That's $2,300. We take off $1,900. You get it for $399. One adult, one student, $399. Only five people. The first five get it. If you don't hear from me, it's because you were over the first five and you could wait to the next time around. Okay. So take advantage of that. Uh, that is, uh, you got to email me uh, G Fraser at FraserNet.com. That's uh, F R A S E R uh, N E T Fraser net G Fraser at FraserNet.com. I'm in put your name and cell number in the body of the email name and cell number. And I will be in touch with you personally. My closing thought for the evening, and it references and actually alludes to something Dr. Cash has said uh, a couple of times. About a month ago, I posted a meme on all my social media, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and Twitter. And the meme simply said, a three-step test for your best ideas. A three-step test for your best idea. Step one, known unknowns or known knowns. Write that down, known knowns. What do you know that you know? Yes. Another way to say that is, what do you think you know, but you really don't know? <laughs> That's the first step. What do you know that you know? That's the first step. Second step, the known unknowns. What do you know that you don't know? Second step. Third step. This is the big one. This is what Dr. Cash alluded to. What are your unknown unknowns? What don't you know that you don't know? You have to be intellectual curious. You have to have intellectual curiosity. So the solution to this three-step test is very simple. Think, do the research, apply. Think, search, apply. Three-step tests to your best ideas. What are your known knowns? What are your known unknowns? And then what are your unknown unknowns? That's my story. I'm sticking to it. We had an incredible night. Oh, absolutely. Terrence Cash. We'll see you at the Power Networking Conference, and we love you, as always. Our goal is to share the most important, the best information from the best people we know. God bless you. Thank you, Brother Bedford. Thank you, Dr. Cash. My pleasure being here, George. Good night to everybody. See you on Saturday.